Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today Red Deer Games are longtime supporters of the channel. They asked me to introduce you to their latest release, Historia, a new indie game with hints of titles like Limbo and it's on sale right now rocking 35% off. A big shout out then to them for sponsoring this video and with that hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. So before we do kick this off, if Astoria looks like one for you, Red Deer Games are celebrating the launch by giving away 20 copies of the game. Now I've linked the form below so if you do go to that page you'll see an option to enter a special code at the very bottom of the page. Add the code Switch Corner there for 10 bonus entries. The winners then they'll be announced end of September and the discount that runs right through till October the 8th. So this is a game I've now finished in its entirety. It's a unique little spin on the puzzle platformer genre. I noted Limbo in the opening moments of this video because it's got an air of almost horror to its world. It often fears into almost the surreal. The story though, you're a young boy travelling across a world that has fallen under the curse of an ancient being, the title Historia. The game's story, it's minimal, but it's delivered in text on screen, often with a poetic edge to its writing, but it for sure crafts something that feels, I think, unsettling would probably be the right word. Gameplay then, it's the tried and tested genre standard of puzzle platforming, so some early examples include portals which will fling us around this world, there's levers to move objects, out of reach platforms to scale, and a few moments definitely had me stuck for a little while. Movement here then, there's a floaty feeling to the controls as you run and jump, it definitely matches the game's weird little world though and almost dream like vibe. The game's mechanic though that sets out to differentiate this title from you know the rest of the puzzle platformers out there, it's called the Thumbtack System. Really liked it, essentially the game it's a storybook world so you can pin and unpin objects and it works really well. I like the mechanic so much in fact I wish they'd put even more of it in here, it definitely stands out. So a quick early example of this thumbtack system, there's a ladder, you need to climb, but it's actually above you, so you've got to move to the left of the screen, that's going to lower it, but still not quite enough. I got stuck here for a little while, and when I figured it out, felt like an absolute idiot, but I would move left, it would lower, not far enough though, move right though, and it went back up again. The trick, and it was so simple, move left, pin it, move right, unpin it, move left again to lower it even more, and just kind of repeat. It's not just for traversal either though, and the mechanic it's often baked into then like the game's puzzles as well, but yeah, again, Again, I really did like the system. While there's no combat in this one either, it's full on exploration puzzle adventure, there's a whole lot of things here that can swiftly end your life. Think pitfalls, spikes, creatures, so you definitely need to tread wisely and that first like five or so minutes, it's really getting your head around. If it looks like it can kill you, it probably won't. Well, it nearly definitely can. Finally then, as you do progress, the game has a good grasp on escalating that difficulty in both the platforming and the puzzles. One thing that definitely caught me off guard though, you'll boot up the game, you'll start moving from the left side of the screen to the right, you know, a typical convention of the genre. It then immediately dashed this away, making me walk backwards. Now I know that sounds a little bit weird, moving from the right to left, it shouldn't be something you normally highlight, but I think it's purposely playing into the weirdness with you and it will constantly mix the direction you're heading up. So visuals and audio then and the graphics, they are going to be an acquired taste, no doubt about it. But also, this is a case of seeing it in motion is a lot more impressive than maybe the stills on the eShop and how they represent the game. It's a storybook style and that hand-drawn style, it definitely is unique, especially as you progress and portals, monsters of sorts appear and the colours, they pretty aggressively change. Like there's a lightning storm scene pretty close to the beginning of the game, but it sends near everything white. The music then is a highlight for sure. There's not like a huge amount of music on offer here but the tracks we do get they definitely add the atmosphere to the game i want to be realistic then here and discuss some issues yes it's a sponsored video but red deer games they gave me full creative control over what i say here which i always appreciate honestly as well i require it but i wish the game had more sound effects there's a few in here but a little low in the mix if anything it's definitely relying on that music to carry the game also i wish they had a death animation for our lead instead the game just cuts instantly to a loading screen and at points that kind of felt a little jarring the only other thing I want to mention then, not necessarily a problem, but the game is short. Runtime wise took me about an hour to beat it. Now that I've beat it, probably could do it a lot quicker the second time. It was a one man dev team though this, and it does add some replayability by asking you to collect forest dwellers. They kind of aid you in your adventure and there's 13 total to find. I missed a few on that first playthrough. I don't think short is a problem though, some adventures are meant to be bite sized and it definitely works alongside the poetry based storybook vibe they've gone for. 
So again, Historia is available right now on the Nintendo Switch eShop and it's here with a 35% discount. Now I've linked the eShop page down below so you can take a look in a little bit more detail for yourself. But then also remember to visit the link for the chance at winning one of 20 copies. Bonus entries there using code Switch Corner. A shout out then to Red Deer Games again. They've been longtime supporters of the channel so I really do appreciate it as it definitely helps out. With that though, a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. Helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.